Okay. It's not. We are back. Are we back? Yeah. Everybody set? Okay. Are right, you back in session? We have determined that the item that we that that uh, Nick discussed with the uh, town mm -hmm. attorney is not executive session matter. So, we will bring up the fact that you have a candidate who's at the fire academy and he has was it taking two shots at one of the tests? Yeah, he's he's actually done with the fire academy. He, okay. He graduated. He passed the academy. He did not pass the certification exam. Um, and then he's taken it on his own. He's, he's still going through the in-house training with our guys, but the book work at this point is on his own. Um, and he, he took it the second time, and, and the policy of the board has always been, the, the t through the town, it's always been two times, the, the department supports you two times in your event mm -hmm. to, to, to take the exam. Mm -hmm. In the past, they have let somebody else, let another individual take it mm -hmm. a third time. He unfortunately did not pass it on his third attempt. It is. Um, I think it gets discouraging as you take it and fail and then take mm -hmm. it and fail. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is not an easy, it's it's something that you need to work right. at and, and work on. So, and, and I was on the board when, I was the only one I believe of the three of us who was on the board the last time when we, we allowed the yeah. person to do it a third time. So uh, let me ask if there's any discussion regarding this matter. Um, when you're talking about taking it the third time, you mean that the, they <coughs> actually pay for it the third time? Is he, he actually paid for it a second time also. Well, he'll it's, pay for it yeah, the third time yeah, too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. just making it just it's for a 30, It's a $30 fee to take the exam. He, mm -hmm. We don't, um, we don't, we've helped them study. We've mm -hmm. given the, the guys that give them study cards and different things. And mm -hmm. well, let me ask you this. Um, how's he doing with the rest of this stuff? It, he's, it's a struggle. Hmm. He, he, he did well in the program, but he's... That's what I'm asking about yeah, the he, program. He did well in the program. Mm -hmm. he, he was he, he was near the... He was probably one of the better of them when it came to the, the physical, the hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there's there's a lot going on in his life mm -hmm. um, that's it's making it a little more difficult mm -hmm. to, to, oh. to stay focused. We're, we're that far in, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I... It's not going to cost us anything. Right, to right. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, no, I'd yeah, like to make a motion to allow this particular candidate to take a third try at the exam. Yep. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Perfect. Very good. Is that it? I think I'm done for now. Right? Okay. <laughs> Sounds like it. Golly. And I'm sticking around for that other. That other. Do you need me for that other stuff or? I yeah, I guess so. You can. Really? The. I don't know. Do I Do we need for so. that other? Um, Executive session issue. Issue. I thought it was the board's intent for uh, both chiefs to oh, be okay. uh, present. There's the, the, um, the people in the white shirts there. have to sit over there. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. I'll shake your hand Thank later you. when we're actually yeah. officially done. I can do, I can give you a high five with the left hand. With the, where did I, oh there he is. I can see a oh. hand. All right. yeah. uh, next, we're running a little late, oh, but our next we were uh, on time. Our next. The appointment is with Ralph Page. Oh, what up, Ralph? That chief. Okay, you. Congratulations. For a second. By walking between them, you just got billed. <laughs> I know. Did your wallet seem lighter? <laughs> you're going you're, you're to get billed for uh, the lawyer's fees. How are you? Oh, wonderful. How are lawyer you? Lawyer squeeze. Very good. Um, you are here. Well, tell us why you're here. <laughs> um, first off, thank you for seeing me. Um, it's our pleasure. I didn't realize ahead of time. I noticed um, uh, through talking with Nick that two petitioned Warren articles had been submitted on March 2nd. Mm -hmm. um, it's my concern that our general bylaw requires all petitioned articles to be received by the Board of Selectmen by March 1st. Um, I've seen in the past where an article has come in and it's not been accepted because it's late. Um, I understand part of the, the thought with the town was March 1st was a Sunday and to extend it to March 2nd. Um, my thing with that is I've looked through the bylaws. There's no contingency in our bylaw that I can see unless town council or someone can point me in a different direction that allows for that date to be extended. Okay. When it comes to elections, nominations, Absolutely, but when it comes to the bylaw, mm -hmm. what's written? I mean, if it's said in the bylaw, you know, if this particular date falls on a Sunday, it would be the next business day, mm -hmm. or if it's said the first Monday of the month, mm -hmm. yes. Um, 
It doesn't. Okay. And I will defer to the gentleman who gets the big bucks. You want to come up? I don't get big bucks. <laughs> 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 I'll still come up, though. Okay. <laughs> so you know that's relevant. <coughs> the man who gets Everything medium bucks. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Both <laughs> 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 All right. Um, this issue comes up on, in a number of different legal situations. In, 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 in the rules of Massachusetts pleading, where you're dealing with um, cases filed in court, the court's rule is that and, and there's actually a rule that deals with it that says where the pleading is to be filed on a day when the court is closed that the court that the pleading may be filed on the next business day so if it's if you have to file an answer to a complaint or answers to interrogatories on a friday uh, on a sat on the day that comes out on a saturday because they s set not dates, but the number of days from the time you receive the pleadings to when you have to answer it. So that if that answer is due on a, a day that falls on a Saturday or a Sunday, you have until the following Monday. But that's by court rule and by statute. And then there are other specific statutes that specifically add the next business day. And then there are situations where there is no specific business day that's applied. And um, I had a case, uh, actually had a, happened to have a case uh, a couple of years ago in my private practice where I was contacted by an individual who had an issue with uh, one of the local communities dealing with the filing of an application for an abatement. And the abatement was supposed to be filed on a specific day. And that day happened to be, there happened to be a snowstorm that resulted in the community where he needed to file the applications, and he had about 50 of them, closed their municipal offices at noon on that day. And he went to file after noon. The building was closed. He's knocking on doors he couldn't get in. And so he went down the next day that the city hall was open and brought his paperwork in and said, here, I'm going to file my paperwork. And they said, we're not accepting it. It was due on Friday. It was due yesterday or the day before, whatever it was. And you didn't file it on time, therefore we're not accepting it. And he was smart enough to get them to accept it. So they stamped it in that he had filed it. And then the Board of Assessors argued to the Appellate Tax Board that he had not filed it on time, that it was required to be filed on X, and he didn't file it till Y, even though they were closed between X and when he filed it. The Appellate Tax Board, based on, I won't say my arguments, but on the position that we presented to them, agreed that it made sense that the property owner or the person who was involved had the right to file to the end of the day when they should have filed. And if they weren't able to file because of some situation in the community or the fact that the office was closed, that they had until the next business day to file. And I think that's the general equitable rule throughout the Commonwealth. So even though our bylaws are silent on the effect of not filing on the day, that where the day specifically, March 1, says, you have to file on that day. If you're not open and there's no one available to accept the filing on that day, I would submit to you that the appropriate day for the filing would be the next business day where the office is open, and that being the second, that if it was properly filed on that day, that it would comply with the requirements of the bylaw. And I don't have any case law, I don't have any specific case okay. dealing with East Long Meadow that says that, but there were cases dealing with similar situations and similar situations were filing of documents on that mm -hmm. day where that rule is applied in pretty much a consistent application. And, and does it matter because it's a town bylaw because we you know, understood the fact that the first fell on a, on a Sunday and actually voted to allow you know the second to be the date that um, that you know that it would warrant uh, petitioned items could be 
brought in, does that come into it, you know, the fact that the board actually, I believe, took a vote and acknowledged that that would, you know, that was a... It supports that position. Okay. It supports that position, but, but the board's vote doesn't alter if there was a drop-dead prohibition mm -hmm. on extending beyond that March 1st date. Right. Your vote would not be able to extend it. And I believe we, um, unless I'm mistaken, I think this happened last year, didn't it, Nick? Uh, for some uh, reason, it, you know what? It must. It <coughs> must have. Uh, March first must have been on a Saturday. Saturday. So the same thing happened, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I know we allowed up until <coughs> the third, I believe. So, um, for whatever, I mean, once you, as you said, that doesn't. That's not set in the standard, but it's you know, I, it, I'm sure it's happened in the past also. So it's it's more it's more or less accepted practice. I mean, you know, what all we're trying to do is allow the townspeople who want to do a petitioned article to have you know enough time to instead of cutting them short by a day or two allow them to have enough time to file a warrant it's sort of an equitable mm -hmm. argument basically mm -hmm. that you're making right and, um, granted the opinion of the town council is, is just that but absent an appeal to a court of superior mm -hmm. jurisdiction it really is the, the rule that's in effect with respect to this so if you feel that that opinion is wrong, or someone feels that that opinion is wrong, they have every right to take it forward and bring it to court and say, hey, is this guy right in making this mm -hmm. interpretation or not? Okay. There you one, go. One of my concerns mm -hmm. was dating back, uh, the bylaw was changed in 2010. It used to be January 15th. Mm -hmm. um, at the board's uh, discretion at that point in time, I brought it forwards. And I said, I thought January 15th was way too early mm -hmm. for petitioned warrant articles to stop. And uh, the board agreed with me and said, you know, March 1st, that's an additional six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if the board so chooses this, then I would ask going down the road for them to look to the bylaw to change I to add so that additional language. Additionally, mm -hmm. that if it falls on a non-business day, that it would be the following day. Mm -hmm. If it falls on the weekend, mm -hmm. that it would yeah, be or the a following. holiday. Or a holiday. Yeah, because I, you know, it's funny because you, like, you deal with this stuff probably on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I, I deal with this stuff on a regular basis. The, you know, the corporate tax return deadline was March fifteenth. That was a Sunday. They had you had till the sixteenth to file. You know, it's a, it, the same thing when the personal tax deadline April 15th falls on a weekend or a holiday or something you have it you have the extended time so you know, it's almost like it because of I guess the line of work I'm in it's almost like a given that I, I think that you never have a business transaction deadline be on a weekend if it happens to fall on that because you can't you don't you don't you don't do business on that day and I understand you're going by the letter of the law but it's but our intent was to try to you know help with help whoever whatever townspeople decided to um, Put a petitioned article in and give them, you know, all the time they were allotted, as opposed to cutting them short. I mean, I would submit to the board that you could honor the request to alter the bylaw to make it clear that if right. it falls on a, a weekend or a holiday, that it goes to the next <coughs> business day. But by the same token, if the interpretation of the town and mm -hmm. the board of selectmen who were accepting the articles is established that that is how you mm -hmm. were going to accept those articles mm -hmm. it's the same yeah, as okay. if you've done that so right you can amend the article you can amend and the bylaws if you want to but it's not something I think necessarily that you have to do if it's clear to the general public that they right. have until the next business day if it falls on a Saturday Sunday right. or a holiday and as we've noted I believe last year the same thing happened and, and nothing did. personal but you didn't bring it up last year so <laughs> I don't believe there was a petitioned article submitted. Okay. Uh, not one that was submitted late past oh, the date. Right. Past okay. that date. Okay. Um, I just have one other thing. Mm -hmm. um, same thing. Um, and I believe I've spoken to you in regards to our bylaw, section 2.02, .02, subsection H, states um, that on the day a town meeting or a special town meeting is held, that boards and committees are not to hold meetings that conflict with that date. Um, this is something that happens Thank you. consistently mm -hmm. and it's my opinion that half the times when you're meeting a half an hour before a meeting your decisions are rushed I know uh, in one occasion where we met that's exactly what happened mm -hmm. um, again 
I think, uh, you know, to follow the bylaw, to do it a day earlier, gives you a little bit more of a relaxed instead of 30 minutes before a town meeting. I wouldn't call meeting on a Sunday more relaxed. This isn't where we're here, so nothing personal. There. But this I'm is just really <laughs> with the weekend town meetings. I'm just <laughs> saying it's it's one of those where I mean it, it states straight out that and and we've boards been and committees are not supposed to meet on a date that conflicts with it. How, and once so, again, with accepted so, practice. So the issue then becomes in the issue of the appropriations committee where they do meet. Right before a town meeting to finalize what's going on at that town meeting it's going to take place in a half an hour or so mm -hmm. that they should be prepared ahead of time or we should amend the bylaw to, to mm -hmm. take that position out of the right. case that it right. should be really it really should be a board mm -hmm. or committee that's not related to the operation of town meeting I don't be, because I, I, mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt you but I can s tell you that the last time the fire contract was negotiated we were negotiating Sunday morning mm -hmm. in the fire station and the changes that the final changes that came through we had to get we went to appropriate I went to appropriations that in the night of the town meeting to get everything hammered out so that would not have been possible and we would not have been able to bring the um, uh, bring the budget to the town meeting for the fire department you know given mm -hmm. given those restrictions I think it's, it's better I and you're I, I like your opinion of changing the bylaws mm -hmm. to allow for the meetings to be held because that's been that's been accepted practice for how many years well or to, or to interpret it to mean right. that the meetings of unrelated boards should not occur during right. town meetings right. such as you know um, conservation commission unless mm -hmm. there happens to be an issue that mm -hmm. deals with conservation that has to be taken up at that town meeting I mean I understand what you're saying it, but I think that the drafters if that was the that if that was the, when they were drafting that they were doing it for the same reason that it says that you will not have a meeting of a governmental body of a municipality on the same day as a state election which means that you don't have the conflict between those two events right. but to the extent that the local board is meeting to discuss matters that relate specifically to the actions that are going to take place at the town meeting that creates a real practical problem mm -hmm. with getting the ready to be able to present all of the positions of the boards who need to present their positions to town meeting because sometimes they don't have all the information right. until the day of town meeting right. to take a position mm -hmm. to go forward. Mm -hmm. That's because the information is not submitted. Well, it, it, whatever the reason it's is, one of those the, the, the board has mm -hmm. to make a decision. They have to make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. For example, planning, for example, you have to make a recommendation to the board, to the town meeting with respect to any zoning articles that are going to be going forward. You have your meeting set by statute as to when they have to be. But if you didn't schedule a meeting until town meeting, the day of town meeting, you'd be hamstrung and not be able to make that presentation to mm -hmm. town meeting. Mm -hmm. And your articles then would be out of order, which creates a whole chaos because people have arranged their personal lives to be there for that meeting, the general public, to vote on those mm -hmm. matters. So they're expecting that the boards are going to be able to give them an opinion on their, on the issues that they're reviewing for them to consider by the time of town meeting. So either one you can amend the bylaw but two I think the proper interpretation again of the bylaw is that it deals with those boards and committees that are not involved with any matters that are going to be going forward for that town meeting if there's something that has to be considered especially board selectly right with with labor negotiations a mm -hmm. lot of times it comes up or other matters that come up with respect to you need to have a position or at least not to have some type of concept and the appropriations committee they they regularly take them it's the right. same day right because and they get the do final they, information that's why i'm bringing it forwards is because a lot of these boards are regularly doing it even though our bylaw specifically states that you're not supposed to do it on the same day now if they wanted to amend it to the time so that it doesn't conflict with the same time mm -hmm. Well, th I think that's the intent that you're getting at is that you don't want to have a town where we schedule a town meeting and then the planning board schedules a planning board meeting that night and people are sitting there going, do I go to a town meeting or do I go to the planning board meeting? Mm -hmm. But if they're in conjunction with and before the town meeting and the purpose is to iron out things for the town meeting, and um, that may not be stated in there, but that's the reason that they're being held. 
but that's exactly to my point is the board of selectmen is holding a meeting yep. appropriations is holding one planning board's holding one and there's no possible way a citizen can go to all three of them to try and figure out what's happening mm. that's, that is i just wanted to bring it up to the board like i said it okay mm -hmm. obviously it's too late for an article to go on and so but we do have a full year before next year. Well, you can, you can also, you can also, if you think, well, if you well, think yeah. that, if you think that this is really an issue in the community, you can, you could, someone could prepare and submit to the moderator a resolution for consideration by the town meeting to ask whether or not the meeting of boards that are involved with or making decisions with respect to items that are going to be coming forward at that town meeting should be subject to the constrictions set forth in the existing bylaw or whether it's intended to apply only to those boards which are really meeting independent mm -hmm. of town meeting to discuss things and it's not binding the resolution right. is not binding but it gives you the sense of the town meeting as to how they feel with respect to this issue right and if they right, say how many people are being affected by the fact that there's three mm -hmm. concurrent meetings running correct okay well through the chair what mm -hmm. I what I think is being said is that if the meetings are to happen that they don't all happen at the same time so giving somebody right. an opportunity to attend all of the meetings is that correct I mean my suggestion, yeah. and again, it would just be me bringing something forwards, is just that it doesn't conflict with the same time as the meeting. Same time as the meeting. And so in other words, if we had like... I uh, think like it's a simple four, change. Say it was four, you but mean, like, you could still have the meetings. Like, say, we met mm -hmm. at four, you guys met so at five, five, appropriations met at six, then the town meeting was seven. Mm -hmm. Then any, if anyone so wanted to go to all the meetings, they, they, they could do, do it if they wanted to, you know. Yeah. So that's, okay. That's what I think. All right. Mm -hmm. That's something we could definitely take into consideration. And in a perfect world, we wouldn't have it before the town meeting, but I think... Well, it may be all for not. Who knows what's going to happen in the next few years with, mm -hmm. uh, with the town. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, sir. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. <laughs> okay, no, take your time. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion. Were there any? Did you? Have, did you? There was just one um, minor um, correction, from a quote, from the word "vote" to "quote." Okay. On the twenty eighth. Of and open Lorraine, session or executive? The open session. Okay. And Lorraine has that, so okay. that's been corrected. Um, all right, then I'd like to make a motion to approve the open session meetings of October twenty seventh and twenty eighth with the with the change as noted in the uh, in the October twenty eighth minutes. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve the executive session minutes of October 27th and 28th as, <coughs> as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Board of Selectmen, old business. Budgets. Um, all right. So we've got. Let's see. The Board of Selectmen budget, Nick. Chairman, if I just uh, uh, explain to the board what you have are the budgets that were presented and discussed at last week's appropriations committee meeting that the board uh, attended. Um, just to keep things you know consistent from week mm -hmm. to week, I didn't submit to the board any of the changes. Um, and uh, what I'll do is, uh, once the board makes its final decisions, I'll resubmit to you into appropriations what those numbers are. So, for example. Uh, the board, the appropriations committee suggested in the board of selectmen budget that the thousand dollars for the MMA conference mm -hmm. be taken off the supplemental and put into the regular budget. Okay. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that the board of selectmen agrees with that, mm -hmm. um, and we'll put that in. That would be a change. Okay. Um, then to that, I have questions here uh, relative to the budget that I think the board's pretty well familiar with, but I could just outline and. Uh, let the board have its discussion if that's uh, okay. Okay. Um, with the Board of Selectmen budget, uh, the big question is uh, whether or not what to do with that uh, supplemental for the personnel question. And I don't know if that ties into a discussion um, in executive under contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. 
It probably would because it's tough to. I don't think we've agreed on anything, and it's tough to approve the budget without approving the what we're discussing. You know, the any salary changes. Um, through the chair. Mm -hmm. So um, once we went into executive and discussed that, <coughs> we really have to open back up to um, approve open the budget. To open session to approve the budget. I would think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Mackey. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's the only item. Um, just as long as I, it, does the board agree with my putting that thousand uh, dollars back into the yes. regular budget? Yes. Yes. Do we have to vote on that? I'd like to make a motion to include the thousand dollars back onto the regular budget for the um, conferences. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. All right. Next uh, budget is the Board of Health budget. <clears throat> and here the biggest outstanding question is what does the board want me to put in there for the budget for the health agent? Just you want to talk? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the budget was going to be thirty dollars an hour. Right, and I think we were going we're, we're going to the town looking for a full time position, I believe, right? For a full time position, thirty seven and a half hours. Mm -hmm. um, the chair. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if it were never mind, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, it's okay. So um, so if that's the case then I look at the supplemental page it's been calculated out um, that at thirty dollars an hour thirty seven and a half hours a week I believe we're looking at uh, fifty eight nine five oh and that would um, that would go in that five one one three line item okay. plus the uh, amount that's paid for the public health nurse so I believe the Full number would be approximately sixty-three thousand in that top number. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, it's needed. Obviously, we've had that discussion yeah. over and over again. So, um, fifty-three. I'd make a. Uh, let's see. Mr. Chairman, there's a question here from. Yep. So, the the number for the. I got 38, I'll say 58 yeah. mm -hmm. would be that for $30 at 37 and a half hours a week. Then you go back to the first page and the amount for the yeah. uh, for the public health nurse yeah. is uh, 44, uh, 54. Mm -hmm. So it would be the 58, 950 plus the 34, 54, which is approximately 63. So. No, we'll have to get the yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's in here. The in-state travel and the so. yeah. Yeah, I believe it's that. Yeah. I, I have, I don't have that data. Okay. Um, I thought we went with this. Okay, I, I can't let it go. Forgive me. I thought we went with the $30 because it was less hours. No, we went with the, no, with the $30 for the full time, too. It, yeah, because we made that's. It 30 hours. $30 to try to keep someone. Right. Okay. For that, the. For that the, was a low end of what they figured. They, it's 30 to 35. Okay. So. All right, and so then when you go to full time, you're just going to go 30, but still, still stay with the $30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went from 19 to $30. Yes, I believe we did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but at 19. Right. Oh, 22. Yeah, where we, we went can't keep anybody in yeah. yeah. Can we go, tw yeah. wasn't it 22 before? Four. But now we got more hours, though. Right, but still, you're going to. Okay. Yeah, but All right. that, that was the problem. They didn't have enough hours and not enough money. Right. <laughs> Both of them, huh? Right. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, we do need that. I mean, so I'd like to make a motion to approve to to have Nick bring forward the supplemental budget for the Board of Health. So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, just yes. oh, just discussion with regards to the, um, what if if and once this is goes through appropriations, mm -hmm. that we really look at that job description and really fine tune it to exactly what's supposed to be done. Um, to, to really look and make sure that that 30 hours, I know it's gonna definitely be used in the beginning of it because we're so far behind. Mm -hmm. But if at some point it looks like they're not doing much because once they get on the routine, it might not require the 37, that we look at that. Well, I, I can guarantee it will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so Chairman, just to, I want to make it clear that it will be $30 an hour for 3750 right. would be the calculation. I believe right. that the two add up to 64.4 on that okay. front, uh, on that first page. All right. Great. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. What's so next? Uh, Thank you. Uh, veterans? Yes. Uh, the next is just to point out to the board that the amount of the assessment is 33,327, uh, not the 32 that um, was on the initial budget. So I just, um, and at this point, because we're in the group of four counties, we really have no, or four towns, we we don't have a lot of wiggle room. So that's that's yeah. our assessment in effect, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. So I'd like to make a uh, a motion to approve the supplemental budget with the thirty-three three twenty-seven um, for the our share of the district veteran services officer. So, so moved. Second. Our second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> and uh, finally, it's the uh, yeah. proposed to H Human Resources Department, HR Department. And this is the one I think needs, yeah. needs some tweaking. Yeah, real <laughs> tweaking. So, um, I wonder what our timeline is to maybe do some tweaking to this and bring it forward. I mean, I'm sure they don't want to hear from us on the 31st, and maybe it doesn't matter. But. Um, well, I, I Mr. Really Chairman, yes. given, uh, if I could, then given what Council was saying, it, if the board wanted to submit the budget, and well, one of the options the board's approved that one now would be uh, fire department, but would this be one that the board would want to submit to appropriations, and then if there are adjustments, uh, communicate those to appropriations later, and say that the, the board would intent would be to either adjust up or probably adjust down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> at that number, if, if, adjust down. <laughs> if the number that you put, um, say you adjust that number down this evening, mm -hmm. and then the board has a thought later that it maybe right. you need to adjust it up. Okay. Maybe right, so, so what you're saying is that ask for the top and then settle for well, no, it. Yeah. You know, yeah. He was to. saying we could go down and then ask for more, but I, through the chair I would suggest that we ask for the top one and, and adjust down. That's, mm -hmm. that's a usually a little easier yeah. to do. But that's a big top, though. Right. I understand that the, that the board's expressing, but, okay. yeah. All right. So I'd like maybe, to make... Maybe you could bring it down to 100,000 as opposed to 120. Sure. Fair I enough? mean, that's, yeah, that's probably half of what... Okay. The half of what the... Well, anyways. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. And we can make a motion to approve a supplemental budget to be brought to appropriations with the top figure of adjusted to $100,000 instead of 120. dollars So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, yes. then the final bottom line number for the HR department would be $120,500. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, 110500 mm -hmm. uh, Excuse me. Uh, right. Yes, $110,500. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. The discussion is that that for a director plus one clerical? It's actually, I don't think that would be a full time clerical based on those figures, but it's it's to sort of get the ball rolling. Is that mm -hmm. a good way of putting it? You know, put get a figure in there so we can talk to appropriations about it. it. May end up less if we if we don't do any if we don't do any clerical and just use what we've got here. If we can figure out a way to do that, then it would even be lower. But at least it gets us in there, yeah. you know, and into the discussion. So yeah, at least a half a clerical. All right. Um, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, next item: annual town meeting draft warrant. You get. We have a um, 
and he gave us a copy of it. So a lot of this, a lot of the stuff is placeholders and whatnot. So, Mr. Chairman, if I could just maybe yes. take a moment to briefly go through it. Uh, sure. First of all, uh, thank you. Um, first of all, just to explain, I want uh, in this draft you don't have one article. There's one missing. It's the uh, meal sales tax. And I don't have uh, the language for that, but it will be uh, in here per the board's uh, vote or at a previous meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, looking at it just briefly, articles one through um, one through eight are you know regular uh, sort of annual articles that are on there: the budget, capital plan, um, a chapter ninety article. A uh, place, couple of placeholders on there for OPEB liability, department transfers. I haven't had those conversations, final conversations with the town accountant about that. I'm making assumptions that they'll want to be in their stabilization article and so forth. Uh, articles 9 and 10, I believe there needs now with the establishment of the water and sewer articles. I believe that each of those will have to have an article for action. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's a conversation with the uh, uh, town accountant. Uh, article 11, Board of Assessors, and these article numbers, again, are subject to change, mm -hmm. but just for reference here, um, Appropriations is uh, rec uh, requesting some funds to uh, relist and recollect personal property data. Uh, article 12, uh, right now it's Article 12, is an article from the Board of Public Works requesting an appropriation for town hall renovations. Mm -hmm. And again, the order here, I've just tried to follow what I believe is similar type of order from previous warrants if the board wanted to make any adjustments um, you know please let me know and so that they could be discussed at the March 31st meeting uh, I would suggest given the schedule that the board consider um, closing and signing the warrant and at, uh, at the April 7th meeting okay uh, part, make that part of the business April 7th yes so that it would be closed and signed and could be on its way for publication with the only changes at that point would be having to do with the uh, exhibits for the budget as appropriations it's closer to its final numbers mm -hmm. um, article uh, let's see 13 and 14 these are uh, articles for turning back of unexpended funds for LCAP projects so uh, one is for 48524 the other is for 4058 so uh, significant turn backs for those projects. And uh, let's see. And just a note on those, those are being turned back to the cable access revolving fund because those come from the money from the cable bills as opposed to, uh, you know, town, other town sources. So they have, to, they have to be used specifically in regard to the cable access to the cable system. That's mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Yes. Um, then you have uh, articles 15 through uh, 19 are annual revolving fund articles. And the only one I don't uh, that I have a question on and to speak with the account about is that center school mm -hmm. revolving. I think it's uh, I believe there's some discussion. Yeah, the, 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 that wasn't going to take place. Um, article 20 uh, would be the Fourth of July parade. Mm -hmm. Asking for those funds. Then we get into Article 21, the CPC, the annual housekeeping article. Uh, 22 is a, a rebalancing article. I had spoken with Mr. Kingston about this. I need to get the language from uh, the town accountant. She, as part of her diligence in looking at the books, wants to rebalance within the community um, preservation funds, mm -hmm. make some adjustments. and. I don't have any information as to what the basis is of that. I haven't had that conversation yet with her, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a placeholder article. Okay. Uh, 23 is a CP funds, CPC funds for the uh, digital preservation of historical records. You recall that the Board of Selectmen had uh, submitted to the Capital uh, Planning Committee its endorsement for that as part of one of the four capital. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, apparently now had been made a request for the Community Preservation Committee got involved, oh. and they voted to support using funds for even better uh, for that. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a CPC has uh, approved uh, the uh, putting on the warrant uh, in Article Number Twenty Four, uh, funding to study for an engineering study for playing fields at Heritage Park. Um, so that is uh, that article. <coughs> 
And then Article 25 is three versions of the article relative to elected officials' health care. Um, Town Council had submitted three for the board to consider. Um, the first and the first one, I think the way to look at it is they get more restrictive as you go along. Are we considering these right now? I mean, if we are, I'm li I have to leave, I assume. I, I, at this point, I'm just making a, uh, a going, uh, giving you an overview. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't know that the board is All making right. any uh, recommendations or anything at this particular meeting. Um, but I don't so want to run a follow of ethics. Yes. <laughs> So uh, Understood. I would just suggest to the board that you read them, and if you have questions about the differences, contact either council or myself, okay. and we could go through it with you. All right. Uh, then Article 26 is an article for proposed changes to the uh, senior work-off program. This was the article that the board had talked about putting in there about changing the, art, the hours allowed to 125. Don't have that language. I need to speak with council ab about that, but that's the placeholder for it. Uh, 26 is a petitioned article that proposes to freeze residential tax rates for 27. Uh, yeah, it should be 27. There's two 26s. Oh, pardon me. So article 27 here uh, would be the one to propose freezing um, residential tax rates for citizens age 70 and over. And again, um, appreciate the pointing out just for people listening. The article numbers here are for reference in this meeting only. only. Yeah, the, the, they are subject to change and will change. Um, and then what would be Article 28 is a petitioned article, again, uh, relative to changes uh, to elected officials' health care coverage. And those are the articles um, as of right now, uh, unless there is anything other financial article that needs to be put on there that I'm not aware of. Uh, I believe that is... Uh, your warrant, more or less. Okay. There are no articles for zoning for street taking this year, so it's oh. it's really in kind of an unusual annual town nice. meeting warrant. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Very good. Now, um, next is the annual town meeting draft warrant, and after reading it, Nick, once again, this is one of the many times when you make me sound intelligent, so I want to thank you for that. The, um, the draft annual town uh, reports, the boards had them and reviewed them. I've heard uh, feedback um, from Select Thorpe and requesting just to make a change to add in uh, um, her introduction in the board's support of the Warren article going back to uh, October of 2013 relative to the nuisance property bylaw. So there's a section in there that talks a little bit about how the board last year implemented uh, a sort of a pilot program to clean up those properties, but there would be a line prior to that just giving that brief history as to how it came to be, um, how that bylaw got changed. But I have not heard of any other changes from board. Oh, ex excuse me, yes. And to add information in under the Board of Health report about the scholarships that the Board of Selectmen distributed through the auspices of the community funds from Republic Services. Um, so there, those would be two additions to the report um, for the Board of Health report. And with that, I would ask whether or not the board is comfortable now with those being the reports to be published. <coughs> yeah, I have no problem. Okay. Any formal vote? The board has traditionally taken a vote on the reports. I'd like, I'd like to make a motion to accept the report, annual com, uh, reports of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health with the changes duly noted. So moved. Is there a second? Uh, second. Uh, all, uh, any further discussion? Uh, we'll get a copy of it first before it's published, correct? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, next is our meeting schedule. Chairman, so the board has now outlined a meeting schedule that will be March 31st, April 7th for, uh, for the most part for the interviews of the sergeant mm -hmm. or April 8th if, if necessary, right. but the 7th is preferred. The board then would next meet on April 28th. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, and then my question to the board is your May meetings are May 12th and 26th. Uh, does the, do any of the board members see? 
any potential conflicts? Not, not with those for me. Okay, cover your ears. Well, yeah, because we I thought we were going to talk about the meeting of the town the annual town meeting, so oh. I want Ralph to cover his ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have a problem with any of those. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Oh boy. Anyone else that we know? Of? So as of now, it sounds like it'll be fine. If something comes up, obviously we can address it as it occurs. But great, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, cable TV matters. Notice of franchise fee. So they. It's an annual payment that uh, they make to the town for the franchise fee, and it's based on 50 cents per subscriber as per the contract, and it's a payment this year of 250. Thank you. Two thousand five hundred one. Uh, yes, right. with five thousand three subscribers, according to the records. Right. Um, and the second item is a cable survey, which I believe we're sending out <coughs> um, to the cable. Um, it, it's for the survey, um, and it's going out to all of the. It's uh, the survey is available to all of the Sun Meadow residents, not just people who have cable. And we're looking to find out exactly um, how you're using LCAT. And some people, um, as you know, we can get LCAT mm -hmm. on uh, YouTube. We want to know um, if you're using it that way. And I am going to pass, pass that to Nick because I'm sure I missed something. No, um, the, the, you know, the, it's just as you stated. Mm -hmm. And this is the letter that would go out. It'll be put up on right. LCAT letter, uh, letterhead. We just wanted to mm -hmm. give this that's to the right. board. Um, and that's really uh, Mr. Mackey putting that together along with the uh, input from the committee. Nice job, Mr. Mackey. And also the, um, the survey <coughs> uh, work of um, particularly uh, Mr. Saletti and Mr. Uh, Mackey working on that, but reviewed by the committee. With, uh, the committee believes that these are pertinent questions and really taking a somewhat exhaustive look at other surveys and other committees and trying to really tailor it to uh, East Long Meadow. The, um, so this is the plan, is to send these out, as uh, Selectman um, Thorpe said, to get them out in the community. The committee would like to, uh, if I could move on to the next. Oh, please. Um, the committee would like to send these out as a mailer um, to all, uh, all residences receiving mail in town. And to do that will cost some funds. Uh, the committee proposes to use LCAP revolving funds um, however, while there is plenty of money in the LCAT revolving fund, as the board will recall every year, a, a revolving fund is established for the LCAT, for the operations of the LCAT, <coughs> which establishes a cap, if you will, on the amount of money that can be spent in that particular year. The only way that additional funding could be spent would be, in effect, to raise the cap. So here is a question and a request of the board is it would be a two-part um, uh, plan. The first would be for the board to consider raising the cap uh, with the idea here. I believe, uh, Don, if, if uh, the amount we're looking for is not to exceed 5,000, was it? 4,000. Uh, um, ask the board to approve raising uh, the amount of the revolving fund for fiscal year 15 uh, for an amount not to exceed an additional four thousand dollars to pay for the survey and then the second part of that if the board agreed would be for that request then I, I believe to go to the um, appropriations committee for their approval as well okay, and just just to be straight this is a special circumstance because you're sending out this this survey to the to the townspeople because I don't want to you know I don't want our taxpayers who are basically our bosses to think that we went to town meeting for X amount and then just arbitrarily went for an addition to that, you know, just t took what they voted on and changed it. So I just want, wanted to note that this is for a special, for a special um, um, activity to okay. get an idea from the, because from the, not everyone has charter. So yeah. obviously, um, um, well, yes. Also through the chair, just so that they understand also, we are entering into, into negotiations with uh, charter right mm -hmm. now. And, um, to be effective in the negotiations, we want to have as much information as possible. So the more information we get from our community, the better we can negotiate, okay. a better contract, hopefully. And to that end, 
if we're going to appropriate this money for this purpose, it'd be nice for the people who are who we have chartered to respond to the survey and probably greater amounts than they have in the past done. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to make one, one other note is that uh, the survey we uh, the committee plans to have that survey available online. Okay. Too. Great. Great. People can. When is there a contract up? It's up in February of 2016, I believe, but we're starting negotiations now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the the additional four thousand um, dollars to be spent from the the LCAT revolving fund for the purposes of issuing a survey to the townspeople. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Um, and then there's just a notification from Charter that. For some for some reason, new people get a little different channel things than we do. They get the, if you're new, you get like four different channels that are on that are somewhere else in the digital tier one for the existing customers. So they all get them, but they're just in different places. Uh, next item: Friends of the Brown Property. Uh, they're looking that they, they had come before us regarding a tree planting request. Um, I think we're a little closer to seeing the ground than we were when they came in a few yeah, weeks ago. A so. Um, what Nick to this then is this something that they want us to sign off on well, this I, I, germ, germ plasm agreement I think the uh, committee would like for that I, I don't know if um, town council may have much to um, discuss with this I think it's sort of an unusual uh, situation <laughs> calling him in from the bullpen again <laughs> yeah well this is not the typical tree planting request. This is not something where a company comes in and says, we've got 50 maple trees, we're going to give you to plant this. This is from this from some company, I don't know, I don't recall where they're located, but they have, um, they bred these trees in a special <coughs> manner. Mm -hmm. they're, they are giving them to various entities to maintain and it's the responsibility of the community to make sure that none of the um, produce or their intellectual property parts or, their, or their, any of the yeah. trees are allowed to go forward to any other entity other than this during this period of time. To the extent that this agreement imposes on the community the responsibility to see that if a tree is cut down or if the property is sold, that the trees are removed from the property and destroyed so that none of the genetic makeup, the DNA, for lack of a better term, of the trees is uh, allowed to be taken by any other entity than this entity. Do, so we, do we have to account for the chestnuts? I mean, that's that's part yeah, of the whole much. deal. So if they, you know. Pretty much. I mean, as, as stupid as that sounds, you know. I mean, it pretty much all of that comes into this term, chips, gemsum which is the term they use for all of the products that come out of this tree. So, um, although I think it's a, it's a laudable purpose that the, or I guess it's germs plasm agreement or whatever it's called, the, the issue is to the extent how aren't you going to enforce this against the community? Mm -hmm. And if they do, who in the community is responsible for ensuring compliance? So, um, can can we allow them to plant their trees without signing an agreement and say, you know, I don't know that they'll give them to you without without the agreement being signed. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem, a and I, I don't think it's it's not clear to me who is the one who's going to be responsible for overseeing that the care and maintenance of the byproduct of these trees right. is going to be maintained. <coughs> So, although I don't have any great problem in concept with what they're asking, I do have a problem with, in practice, how it's going to be applied. Is this something we should go back to them and ask, get uh, some or, further definition? Uh, or go back to the friends mm -hmm. uh, and say, tell us how you're going to oversee the responsibilities that are here and what guarantees are you going to give to us as a community that we're not going to be responsible to this supplying company if there are claims made. Can the friend sign that agreement instead of the town? Because well, it's town property. I don't, I, I assume I they could, think. 
But again, not controlling the land. Right. Would we give them the right to take these trees down if you decided that this land was no longer necessary to be within the confines of mm -hmm. the property maintained by the town and you wanted to dispose of it in some purpose or give it to someone other than the friends? then the burden under this agreement would be that those trees would have to be cut down and burned and destroyed to prevent that DNA or <coughs> reproductive material from these trees mm -hmm. to pass on to someone else. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's not a... I mean, it's, it's one of the new scientific things that's it's right, out of but the ordinary. Yeah. But I guess what I'm thinking is, and God forbid this were to happen, suppose we had another October 30th of 2011 and we have 10,000 trees destroyed we have to take eight trees and make sure that those are properly you know those are properly burned as opposed to just taking them with every other tree and getting rid of it you know if we're in the hook yes. for that then, then I'm not in favor of signing this I, I'll tell you right personally you know you, you do have to you, okay. you do have that separate responsibility to keep these the byproducts of these products separate and apart from other things and make sure that they are not available to other individuals but is it possible to, to the chair? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that we could have the friends take on that since they are a nonprofit? If they are, if they're agreeing to to withhold, to hold the city or the town harmless mm -hmm. for any responsibility for it, I think you could do it. It's just a matter of then there's no reason for us to sign it because then we're going to. There's no the same easy thing way to say sign it in in. in it's it's difficult because it's not the normal right. type of contract mm -hmm. we're saying we're giving you something just take care of it if it were an oak tree and you were going to water it and take care of it and mm -hmm. give it fertilizer and, and if you cut it down you were going to throw it into the brush or everything mm -hmm. else you could do that that would be fun. you can't do that here right. so it's a different requirements being placed on it and my concern is that we don't have anybody in place who's going to know what those requirements are okay. and I'm not concerned necessarily that the damages are going to be significant, but you may have faced some type of issue with, with respect to liability and not complying with mm -hmm. the agreement, and you, you don't want to do that. You don't right. want to put the community at risk for that type of situation. So if the friends could work out an independent agreement with the community as to how they were going to maintain the trees in compliance with this agreement, and they could execute it, and the town could agree that they would be responsible for maintaining it and give them the authority to take care of maintaining the trees under that authority, then I think it's something that's workable. And okay. it may even be workable under a different scenario, except I have not contacted these people at all to talk about any different scenario. I just looked right. at the agreement. Even though the trees are on town property, as we discussed before, when I, was, when I wanted to just have the friends sign off on that, it, it, it sounds like you're basically in a roundabout way doing the same thing. The friends are responsible for it, but we're, we're they're still on town property if, in your in your scenario. So right, they still have to. There still has to be some type of agreement where right. there's a responsibility where they're responsible. Town's held harmless, and there's an agreement to comply with the obligations mm -hmm. that this uh, American Chestnut Foundation is imposing on the trees that they're going to be granted. It's, it's a it's a it's a laudable effort, mm -hmm. but it is an experiment. And you're part of the you're being part of the experiment. Enjoy. Um, any any other discussion? <laughs> Remember, I'm voting for you. <laughs> What's she running for? Uh, what's his name called? For the, for the green. Who's got the for most the green. green? Who's got the best green for St. Patrick's Day? For St. Patrick's Day. Oh, right. yeah. this is yeah. typically my own vote, so I'm the only yeah. person who counts. Because <laughs> he's. Um, <laughs> with regards to um, working with uh, Heather, I don't mind doing that. I know we. Um, well, I think I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think that yeah. it comes down to it doesn't sound like the town should be put in the play, position to be on the hook for any of this. So if the right. friends can work out a deal with this with, that with company. this company or whoever they are to get their trees and the friends be responsible for the maintenance and the friends be responsible if and we have in writing that the friends are responsible if there's damage to the trees and they have to be destroyed then I'm fine with that but I don't think the town should be responsible for that no. it's not our suggestion that, that they, you know you could they could just print plant um, saplings if that was the case instead of getting these from you know these people that are right and George is working genetically George engineered. working with her too so yeah so I think that's what we should go back to the friends and sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and also, the wood, 
something but to do with the meeting with the 4-H representatives? Yes. Is that for us? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. So That's what I was leading oh. to. No. You you please. I spoke to you no, no. Mm -hmm. the others, uh, yesterday or no. mm -hmm. uh, last Friday, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, I report to the board that I did have a uh, conversation with um, Ms. Cunningham uh, about the 4-H proposal that she had outlined when she was here last time. And she um, was willing and able to arrange a meeting, and um, I suggested <coughs> that perhaps they come in and meet with the full board at the meeting on the 31st, just to outline some of the types of programs that uh, could be uh, offered by 4-H up there. Mm -hmm. And also, so with the board's permission, we'll just go ahead and schedule that mm -hmm. um, for a nice meeting with the board. <laughs> and then to talk about, uh, come back and ask the board you know, to try and get some more detailed reports about what kinds of use those buildings mm -hmm. uh, might take with those in conjunction with those programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh I yeah, will that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. All right, the new business. We have a request from the Masonic Temple for a one-day liquor license, beer and wine, on Saturday, March 21st, 2015, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Masonic Hall, 43 Chestnut Street. And also a request for entertainment, same date and time, in conjunction with a birthday party. Insurance is on file. I'd like to make a motion to approve both the liquor license and the entertainment license for this particular event. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Also, there's a request from St. Michael's <coughs> Knights of Columbus, 9960, regarding a one-day liquor license, beer and wine, on Friday, March 27th, 2015, from 5 to 7 p.m. at St. Michael's Community Center, 53 Summers Road, to benefit the Salmano Scholarship Fund. Uh, insurance is on file. I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve the one-day liquor license. So moved. Second. Some, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a request from Graziano Gardens for a their eighth annual garden party on <coughs> Saturday, March 21st, 2015, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, temporary food service permit, temporary food service permit application approved by Lois Lunowitz, temporary health agent, uh, police and fire recommendations received. So I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve both the garden party and the food and food service permit. So moved. Is there a second? Absolutely, second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, there's still snow on the ground. It's still March, but we have an invitation <laughs> to the Independence Day Parade, which I think we'll accept, yeah. God willing. I know I was one of the three people at the cancel last year, so <laughs> it was like, <laughs> hopefully we'll have a little better weather. Yeah. Oh, we don't have the money for that this year? Yeah. I guess last year's money in theory was turned back into the town yeah, because it was never right used. So yeah. But I think we have to go back and, and re-request re, re it at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. And once again, item 18, as we discussed at the beginning of the meeting, um, we our, our town administrator has has taken a position with the town of Wilbraham and uh, we will be we will be you, you don't know the time frame yet for I, I don't okay um, if I could uh, mr. chairman sure. I'd just like to say a couple of words and uh, um, certainly I've not uh, accept uh, I've not seen a proposal yet from the town I expect one is coming uh, but I would like to thank the board of selectmen and uh, the citizens and the department heads and everybody that I've uh, been very privileged to work with in my 10 years here. And just to say thank you to the entire community for the opportunity to work here. Um, it's been terrific. And um, again, uh, going now to the timeline, I would just say that um, once I've uh, executed a contract with the town of Wilbraham, I will then uh, submit a formal resignation, uh, which at that time, according to my contract, there's a 30-day uh, period that I have noticed that I'm at least that I must give to the Board of Selectmen. But it's not my intention to um, leave at you know, the earliest possible moment. I, that will have in large part to be determined with the Town of Wilbraham. Mm -hmm. But um, I would, it would be my goal to uh, work very closely with the Board as much as the board would like me to be involved with uh, the transition to a new town administrator and to help you uh, with that process in any way that you would like me to uh, and as for long as you would like me to and that I'm here. So I'm open to whatever the board would like to do. I do have some suggestions um, mm -hmm. or yeah, uh, I, I can answer any questions, what you think might be, you know, what I've seen. What if we don't improve your resignation? Oh, well, well that would that would cause a that would cause a pickle. 
But, uh, <laughs> I never thought about that. It's an <laughs> option. <laughs> there you go. I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, I hadn't thought about that one. We, we obviously, chains. Billy has. We got, some, we got some chains out back, right? Clicking <laughs> on his leg. Yeah, um, we can't go. I just like I know I said something at the beginning of the meeting, and uh, I don't want to dwell, but um, it, it's been an honor for me to work with you for these six years, and I can safely say that you are a, you are a consummate professional. I I, there's, I I haven't met a lot of people in my life that take their job as seriously <coughs> and as diligently as you do, and uh, it's it's reflected in the town and how wonderful the town is being run. And um, thank, you. thank you. You're going to be you're gonna, you're going to be a tough act to follow. I can yeah. tell you that right now. But I don't want to you know I I don't want to muddy the waters for people potentially coming in but I I, I <laughs> oh. just want I just want to say that we've been through a lot um, uh, you know in our six years <laughs> we won't go into details but in any event um, it, it I've I've just enjoyed it tremendously and I've enjoyed working with you and our all our discussions so thank you thank my you. pleasure um, through the chair I guess the reason that this was put on was also so we could start that conversation of whether or not we would have a search committee Mm -hmm. or um, and what that search committee would look like if it were to come to that and we do have some time thank God for that and um, perhaps we, to use Nick as a resource mm -hmm. doing it and uh, reach out to our community and see how we want to go good. for it. if yep. we were to accept his resignation mm -hmm. that is as uh, Nick, Select right. McGorman has said yeah. uh, to the chair mm -hmm. Nick you were one of the last three people the goal, but how many applied for that job? For the uh, Wilbraham position, mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say it was tw 24. Oh, f uh, Don is saying it was 47. Yeah. A little more f uh, fresh on his mind, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so 47. Wow. Because I, I want to say I went to the, to the uh, interview with Nick, and um, I sat there and listened <coughs> to him. Mm -hmm. Saw the other side of Nick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize he. I didn't realize he was so funny. <laughs> He's just not, not funny with you. I, I see him being funny all the time. Was, and I, I gotta say, uh, Carolyn, Brennan, and I sat there like uh, we knew right then and there you're going to get the job mm -hmm. because so. What I also went for is to see the other candidates. So if you did get the job, see if any of <laughs> No, you those didn't. Guys. Yes, I did. Oh. In, uh, he's our, he's our advanced scout. I'm going <laughs> to tell you the truth. I wasn't impressed with any of them, but mm. you. Don, can you yeah. take that out of the room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Just yeah. in case they apply. Well, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> now they, now they won't because they don't get into the job. <laughs> our oh. list has gone from 46 <laughs> to, to 2. To <laughs> 2, right. Yeah. He's, <laughs> Well, I will say that, that, Nick, you do shine, and uh, you will be missed. Thank you. You will be missed. Thank you. But we're, we'll hold on to you as long as we can. That's right. And now that we've got your head so big, it won't fit through the sliding doors. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the Board <laughs> of Health. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is the action? Is there anything that, well, in particular, I at just, this moment? I, I just put it on there just to have, to yeah. have a thought. To, to I think um, to we will we'll, we'll give it some thought as to forming a search committee and who should be on it and we can, all, we, we can use your guidance in that regard. Um, I've got some ideas. I'm sure the other board members have some ideas as to who should be on the, who should be on the committee. So we'll... Um, or if you want to go with an outside agent. I think there are several ways to go. True. Um, if you're going to use Nick, uh, I'll act as your agent now. If you're going to use Nick as a consultant, you know, he gets a consulting fee. I'm just putting it out there. Not that's free. Well, I, agents get 10%, it? so is that the case here? No, absolutely yeah. not, but it is what it is. Right. I, I think we need to make sure right. we're aware of that. I, I would, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would yes. ad just advise the board that um, another option for the board to consider would be to look for an interim position. Mm -hmm. It's my experience that, uh, in particular, when using a search committee uh, function, which I think is a great option, um, that you're probably looking at a very bare minimum of three months to conduct the search, including at least one month of advertising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that advertising, if you wanted to use the um, MMA mm -hmm. as one of your resources, which I would recommend, mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to get something in for the April one, that deadline is, it may have already passed, I'm, I don't know off the top, but if you're looking at May, so then you're for the mm -hmm. publication, the online right. can go in tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. yeah. it, just to be thinking about yeah. what is the speed at which that you would want to conduct. S um, 
through the board. Mm -hmm. Seeing we're losing you, Nick, uh, how did you find out about the job? What would you, you look into? Well, we uh, get the MMA publication, um, and I'm frequently on that website uh, anyway, so familiar with it. So it was through, it was either through the written publication or on the MMA website. I mean, what what made you look in that? For a new adventure? Or? <laughs> well, I think that I... You way, know what? That's one way of putting it. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, it may help us sure. for someone well, else looking for a new uh, adventure. You know, I, I think as I outlined in my interviews and at the presentation that uh, my desire to seek another position has nothing to do whatsoever with wanting to leave mm -hmm. um, my current position. It wasn't a burning desire for that. Um, it was based on what other kind of town administrator position is out there that would be a career advancement, a career progression, more responsibility, more authority. As you know, um, the position here and what works for East Long Meadow is a, a what I would consider a weaker mm -hmm. form of town administrator. Mm -hmm. And in the town um, of Wilbraham, the form is a bit of a stronger town administrator. Again, fitting in with what uh, I would consider a career pro uh, progression. So I think ambition uh, really yeah. is what was the driving factor. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but you thank did. you. <laughs> well, no, I, I appreciate um, to, you know, the opportunity to explain again to the board and to anybody who may be watching this, but yeah. uh, I have nothing but gratitude for my time here. Very, very much so, very grateful. Thanks. Thank I figure you. you're just sick of training new selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that was the case, I'd be gone too. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I appreciate you, everything you did for me. I learned a lot from you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right.